If there's one thing I've learned after more than 17 years experience as a cybersecurity professional, it is how to protect my data from hackers and malware and ensure that I never become a victim of a cyber attack. And that's why in today's video, I'm going to share with you my strategies and techniques for making sure that my data is kept safe and secure at all times. But before I give you my strategies, if you're new here to the channel, welcome to Lab Cyber. My name is Alex. I talk about all cybersecurity related topics and events and issues. So if you do like content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so they're notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. Now let's talk about the strategies that I employ to make sure that I am never hacked. So the first thing I want to talk about here is going to involve passwords. Now, like it or not, passwords are still the primary method by which we're able to protect our data from hackers and malware. But when it comes to passwords, there's two things that you absolutely cannot afford to do. The first would be to use weak passwords. You don't want to do that. And then the second, which is the bigger crime, it's using the exact same password for all types of accounts. The vast majority of people have one single password that they use for all their social media accounts, their email accounts, their bank accounts, and so much more. This is a crime that you should not commit. Now, to avoid this, there's two ways you can go about it, okay? You can either make use of password managers like Dashlane and LastPass. However, this won't be my recommended choice because keep in mind that LastPass and Dashlane can be hacked. In fact, they've both been hacked in the past before. So when you, you rely on these password managers, you're putting your faith and trust in a third-party application that could also be hacked. Now, my preferred option would be to create the passwords manually. Come up with your own formula for creating your passwords. This way you can create three or four different passwords and you'll never have to use the exact same password for all your accounts. Now you may think that this might be very, very complicated. It might be very, very complex. You might forget the passwords and things like that. But trust me, if you come up with your formula, you will be able to create strong passwords and in multiple different versions, okay? Personally, I use about five different passwords. I have a password for my social media accounts, a password for my bank account, a password for my email accounts, and then two random passwords that I use for random accounts all over the internet. I'm going to talk about that a bit later. But I've actually shared a video. I made a video last year on how I created my own formula for creating passwords. So if you're interested in learning how you can manually create your own passwords through a formula that you can create yourself, be sure to check out the link in the box below. Now let's talk about the second strategy and this is going to involve the use of two-factor authentication. Yes, I know that two-factor authentication isn't necessarily the strongest form of defense, but it's still an extra layer of defense. One of the best ways to protect your data from hackers and malware is to have multiple layers of defense and two-factor authentication is an extra layer. So even though it might not be the strongest kind of defensive layer, it is still an additional layer that a potential hacker or attacker would have to bypass before they get access to your data. So whether it's your email accounts, your bank accounts, your social media accounts, any kind of account that's important to you, more than likely they will have the option to enable two-factor authentication. So please go ahead and enable two-factor authentication. Now, the method of the two-factor authentication could either be through a text message that you receive on your phone, or it could even be an authenticator application. Personally, I prefer the authenticator application on my phone, on my Android phone. Phones, excuse me. I actually do use the uh, Google uh, Authenticator. It's the application uh, right here. Let me just quickly uh, open it so I can show you. And uh, you can see right there, that's the Google Authenticator. That's what I use for my two-factor authentication. So I will strongly encourage you to enable two-factor authentication wherever you can. Now, the third strategy I want to share with you will involve creating a dummy email account. Yes, you can have your primary email account, which you probably use for your personal information, your personal data. You could have a business uh, email account, that's fine. But you should have one random email account that you only use for creating accounts on random websites. I'm pretty sure you may have experienced this before where you go to a particular site, 
you like the content on that side, but they're saying, hey, before you can read the full content, you need to sign in. So they will give you options to register. Now, do not make this mistake of ever logging into such websites with your social media. They're always going to provide you with that option to either create an account, create an email account, or just simply log in with your social media and they'll, they'll provide for you Facebook, Instagram, X, things like that. Do not make the mistake of logging in with your social media because now if you do that, you will be granting access to your social media accounts to that particular website. So you do not want to do that. It's always safer, much, much safer to simply create an account on that site using your email account. Now, this is where your bogus or random email account will be used. The reason why you don't want to use your personal email account is because more than likely you will use the password meant for your personal email account to register on that site. And if that site ever got breached, if data ever got stolen, if the information of the users ever got stolen, your password, your email account will be compromised as well. This is why you want to use your random email account to sign up to such websites on the internet. Unless it is absolutely important and necessary to do so, do not use your personal email account to sign up or create accounts on such websites. Always use the random or bogus email account. Now, I want to spend some time to talk about how I protect my money from potential hackers and thieves. Yes, money is very, very important. So there are two things that I do to ensure that I am never losing money. One is to make sure that I have restrictions on how much money can be withdrawn from the ATM. And then second, also, before a certain amount of money can be transferred from my account to another account, there needs to be some sort of a security check. So personally for me, I have a daily withdrawal from the ATM of about 500 US dollars. And then if there is any transfer that's over a thousand dollars, I would need to personally approve that transaction before it can take place. So these are two things I would highly encourage you to do so. I'm pretty sure your bank will provide you with that opportunity to set restrictions. This is a very, very safe way and a very effective way to ensure that even if your debit card got stolen or anything like that, or if somebody was able to make a transfer, you will not be impacted that negatively, all right? If it's $500, okay, you lost $500, but imagine if you lost $1,000, $2,000, or imagine if the attacker was able to transfer $5,000. That would hurt a lot more than $1,000, right? So make sure that you have restrictions on how much can be withdrawn from the ATM daily and also a restriction on how much can be transferred from your account to another account. Now, one other thing I would encourage you to do so regarding your bank account is to take a look at your bank statements, maybe once every month. And the reason is because you will be amazed at the kind of things that we all sign up for and we completely forget that we're actually paying like a monthly uh, fee for that particular application or membership or whatever it is. In fact, this happened to me a few weeks ago. I was going through my bank statements and I realized that, oh, only a few days ago, I had actually resubscribed to a membership site for about 250 US dollars. Now, this site was one of these uh, music sites where you can download a uh, royalty free music. Me being a content creator, obviously, this is something that, that I need access to. But the thing is, I hadn't used that particular site for more than six months. So I completely forgot about it. And it's only because I went through my bank statement and I saw, oh, wait a second, I resubscribed to this particular uh, membership site. So I reached out to them and I said, hey, look, I'm sorry, I forgot that I had a recurring subscription going on. If you look at my account, I haven't downloaded anything for the past six months. Can you please just give me a refund and, and shut down my account? And thankfully they did so. But I only remember this, I only saw this because I, every month, I always take a look at my bank statements to ensure that every single transaction I recognize. So please, I will encourage you to do this as well. You'll be amazed at how many subscriptions you have out there on the internet that you're not even aware of, that you're paying every month or maybe like an annual fee just to keep the membership going. So please be sure to check out your bank statements today. Now let's talk about this device, okay? Our favorite device, our mobile device, the mobile phone. 
We use this for just about everything these days, for shopping, for communication, for navigation, social media, emails, you name it, right? However, I want to ask you a question. If you lost this, if you lost your mobile device today, or right now, maybe you went out and it dropped out of your pocket and you have no hope of ever retrieving it, how negatively will you be impacted? It's probably going to hurt quite a lot, right? But it's not necessarily about you losing the phone. It's more about you losing the data that was on the phone. Most likely your pictures, your audio files, some very important documents, things like that. You may have lost everything. That's going to hurt a lot more than you losing the actual phone. The phone itself can be replaced. But what about the data? So this is why you want to make sure that you have backups of the data on your phone, whether it's your contacts, your uh, images, photographs, audio files, you name it. Make sure that you have a backup of everything. You have so many services out there, Google, Amazon, Microsoft. You can install the apps on your phone and make sure that you're having like a daily backups, all right? If you're using applications like WhatsApp, WhatsApp also offers you the opportunity to back up your conversations, your contacts also on a daily basis. So I'll encourage you to ensure that you're backing up the data on your phone in some sort of a cloud service provider. Please do that. And then also, speaking of the mobile device, there is one thing I want to encourage you to do so, and that is to clean up your phone, especially regarding the applications on your phone. Go through it, okay? If there's any application you haven't used in months, you're more than likely not using that application again. Go ahead and delete that application. The fewer applications you have running on your phone, the faster it's going to operate and the safer you will be, the less vulnerable you will become. So please go through your phone, okay? And scroll through. Are there any applications you're no longer using, things like that? Delete them. You don't need to have all those applications on your phone because you might be thinking, well, Maybe in a few weeks, I might need to use this application. No, if you ever need to use that application, you can always download it again. So please clean up your phone. And then finally, make sure you have some sort of anti-malware running on your personal device. It can save you a lot of money and a lot of time. What I personally use is Malware Bytes. They're not sponsoring me. I'm not a, an affiliate of Malware Bytes in any way. This is just an application I've been using for years now, and I really like Malware Bytes because it's actually quite good, and it's also very, very lightweight. You can install it and have it running in the background so that whenever you try to download anything online that might be dangerous, Malware Bytes will protect you from such malware. So please make sure that you have some form of anti-malware running on your mobile device as well. Of course, VPNs were always going to make this list because I personally love working with VPNs. And not because they provide me with access to content that I otherwise might have been geographically restricted to, but because VPNs ensure that my data is encrypted whenever I am logged into public networks. Now, as somebody who works from home, I love to go to coffee shops like Starbucks and other coffee shops out there and work from there. But here's the thing though, the Wi-Fi, the public Wi-Fi over there is public, it's not encrypted, it is not safe. So what I like to do is once I've logged into the network, I'll fire up my VPN so that if I ever need to log in with a password or share some personal sensitive data, things like that, all that data will be encrypted. Now, I know that it's not likely there is some sort of a hacker nearby, like scanning the network, trying to see if they can gain access to my data. I know that's not likely, but why take the risk? All right, it's just, it's just not worth taking that risk. So please, Ensure that you use VPNs whenever you're logged into public Wi-Fi. And it's also important that you choose the right kind of VPN uh, provider. Personally, I go with NordVPN. Again, I'm not selling the idea to you. I don't work for NordVPN. I'm not an affiliate for them. The only reason why I talk about NordVPN is because I've used them for many years now. And in my humble opinion, I think they're pretty reliable and pretty consistent as well. So if you want to go with a VPN service provider, I would encourage you to go with NordVPN. There is a particular service that I believe you need to sign up for, and that service is haveibeenpawned.com. The reason is because it's completely free of charge and it's very, very effective. What they do is that they keep track of all email accounts and passwords that have been breached. And if you're signed up to them, if your email account ever gets breached in a data hack, 
you will be notified. So what you need to do is you need to go to notify me, provide your email address, subscribe, and then if you if your email account ever gets breached, you will receive a notification. And in fact, let me show you one of the notifications I got earlier this year. This was from August 2024, and it says you're one of the 8 million or so people that were pawned in the Explore Talent data breach. So when you are able to be notified about your email account being breached, I believe that's a wonderful, wonderful service. You can even check in real time if your email address has ever been breached. Simply type in your email address in there, click on pawned, or you can even go to passwords in here, type in your password, and then check to see if your password has ever been compromised. So again, I would highly, highly encourage you to go to haveibeenpawned.com and subscribe to their service. And last but not least is to develop a security conscious habit. Okay, being security conscious, it's a habit. It's something you have to develop. So when you put security first, your chances of getting hacked will be drastically reduced. So whenever you receive that email from somebody claiming to be from PayPal or FedEx talking about how your account has an issue, always ask yourself, is this a phishing email? I need to make sure that this link they provided me isn't malicious. Do not insert random USB drives onto your laptop or computer. Make sure that at the very least you scan them before you do so. And then when it comes to social media, be careful about the things that you share on social media. Don't post important information. Don't post about important events or important data. Any kind of information that can be used against you, do not post it unless it's absolutely necessary to do so. The less information you share about yourself, the less likely you will be, uh, you'll become a target for a cyber attack. And even when you go to all these random events out there like meetups or even online, well, they will ask you to provide your email address or your telephone number, you know, for some information purposes, things like that. Do not provide them with search. If they insist on it, you can provide a fake email address or a fake phone number. There is, you have no idea where all that information that you're providing, you have no idea who's going to get access to that information eventually. So limit how much you share about yourself, limit about limit how much you share about your personal data to strangers and people on the internet. Have the security mindset, develop that security consciousness. I'm not saying be, become paranoid, but always think security first before anything else. So that's it guys, my strategies and techniques for ensuring that I never become a victim of a cyber attack. What did you think about this list? Did you enjoy it? If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up, share the video with anyone who may feel might benefit from it. And of course, if you have any questions or comments or you'd like to add to this list, I would love to hear from you. How are you keeping your data safe from hackers and malware? Let's hear from you. Put your comments down in the comment section below. Stay safe out there, guys. Okay, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.